A garbage truck explodes, rain debris throughout a neighborhood. It embeds a tank in the side of somebody's house. Unfortunately, in this blast, a firefighter and two police officers were injured. This incident started as a typical response to a garbage truck fire. Crews arrived on scene to find trash burning in the back of a truck. These types of calls are becoming way too common. Typically, the driver, they're able to dump that full load of burning trash in the middle of the street or a parking lot. That's to make sure it doesn't actually damage the truck itself. But sometimes the fire damages the controls, and that's not possible. While we don't know the exact cause of the fire yet, there's a growing concern about people improperly discarding lithium-ion batteries. According to the NFPA, there are thousands of garbage truck fires across the country every year, and many of them are traced back to lithium-ion batteries. They're tossed in the trash or the recycling, not where they're supposed to be. To learn more about this, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm working on some pretty fun projects for the future. This video is sponsored by Blazestack Fire Investigation Software. Blazestack is a fully featured fire investigation case management platform that arson and fire investigators rely on to log, document, and report fire investigations. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. At this incident, the truck's compressed natural gas tanks exploded within minutes of the fire department arriving. <laughs> raining debris down for blocks. You can see the way the trash, pieces of the truck, and parts of the CNG tanks were scattered throughout the neighborhood. This piece of the tank laying here in the street, you can see how they're built, very similar to our SCBA tanks. It's wound fiberglass. And over here, a large part of the tank, it's actually embedded into the side of this house. These are pretty large tanks, and to do this type of damage, it's amazing nobody was killed. Thankfully, all three of the first responders that were injured, they were non-life-threatening injuries. They were injured primarily from flying debris and the force of the blast itself. They were incredibly lucky considering the size of this explosion and how far the debris actually traveled. I really hope they recover quickly, but this is a reminder that we face risks every single day. We go to these routine calls and we never know what to expect. Earlier this year, a compressed natural gas truck exploded in LA, injuring nine firefighters. In that case, the truck also experienced a catastrophic tank failure during the fire. Now, there's a lot of similarities here. Both incidents involved fire that progressed to the explosion, with debris scattering over a wide area. Thankfully, again, nobody was killed in either incident, but the LA explosion, man, that was unprecedented. What's clear from both these incidents, LA and Arlington Heights, that first responders, we must continue to train on the hazards around alternative fuel vehicles. It doesn't matter what type of vehicle it is. Back when the LA incident happened, there was a lot of speculation in the comments about whether this was a blevy, a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion. But let me clear that up. This wasn't a blevy. Blevy incidents, they're typically associated with LPG or liquefied propane gas. It's completely different. CNG, it's a compressed natural gas. Don't get me wrong. Either way, this is a massive explosion, and it's, it's catastrophic, but it's a different mechanism. The key difference here between CNG and LPG, it comes down to how those gases are stored and how they behave under fire conditions. LPG, again, it's stored as a liquid under pressure. So when that tank is exposed to heat, the liquid inside it rapidly boils and expands, creating conditions for that blevy. The gases from that boiling propane will vent out the safety valve. And that's exactly what we do want to see. However, when these tanks will fail catastrophically, they'll do it in an area above that liquid level. That's why LPG fires, our tactic is to actually flow water onto the tank to keep it cool and prevent that blevy. Compressed natural gas, on the other hand, CNG, it's stored at very high pressure. These tanks are designed with pressure relief devices, or PRD valves. They activate when the tank gets too hot. That PRD valve, it's supposed to release gas in a controlled way, and it's designed to prevent a catastrophic explosion. But here's the problem. If you spray water on a CNG tank, that cooling effect will actually prevent the PRD valve from opening properly. This means that the tank can build up pressure until it actually fails. And when it does fail, it's going to lead to a catastrophic explosion like the one we saw here in Arlington Heights and the one we saw earlier in the year back in LA. This difference in tactics, cooling LPG, but avoiding putting water on CNG, it creates a real challenge for first responders. In my opinion, there needs to be a better solution. CNG tanks should have a more robust and reliable way to vent under fire conditions. 
Whether that's a redesign of the PRD valves or some other innovation, it's clear that what we're seeing right now is not working. Thankfully, in this case, there were no life-threatening injuries, but seeing the scale of the explosion, how far that debris was thrown, and the damage it actually caused, it's really amazing that there were no fatalities. Incidents like this, they're a wake-up call for everyone in the fire service. We need more awareness, better training, and more importantly, better technology to keep this from happening in the future.